Support for the leadoff on WGLT and WGLT.org comes from the Central Illinois Regional Airport, where travelers are one stop away from world destinations. Connections on American Airlines to Chicago or to Dallas-Fort Worth are available daily. Close, convenient, CIRA. More at CIRA.com. A shake-up for Shakespeare, as ISU appoints a new artistic director for the annual Summer Festival. That's one of the things you need to know to start your day for Thursday, June 13th. I'm Eric Stock, and this is WGLT's The Lead Off. Now let's lead off with the McLean County's retooled behavioral health strategy. County Board Chair Catherine Metzger announced in March the county's behavioral health advisory group would be restructured. This was at its last quarterly meeting in March. The next quarterly meeting, scheduled for tomorrow, is not happening. WGLT's and Melissa Ellen was told that's because the restructuring is taking longer than expected. When County Board Chair Catherine Metzger set out to give the county's Behavioral Health Coordinating Council structure and function guidance, she had hoped the work would only take a few months. But things haven't gone to plan. She's proposed an ordinance that would move things along, but it hasn't gone before the board for a vote. The county board's executive committee was supposed to discuss it at Monday's meeting, but Metzger pulled the agenda item last minute. She says that was so Bloomington and Normal could weigh in. The municipalities contribute shared sales tax dollars to a fund the council oversees. Sometimes we have to take a step back, and um, that's what happened yesterday. Metzger says she's hopeful the ordinance will wind up back on the agenda for next month's meeting. If that's the case and it's approved without revisions, then the way mental health and public safety spending recommendations come to the county will change. Metzger's current proposal intends to remove the Behavioral Health Council's input on spending recommendations and focus more on coordinating services. And that's in the, in the work that's being done locally and looking regionally as well as nationally to improve the mental health services within our county. Metzger's proposal would shift spending recommendation power to a new joint advisory council with members from the larger advisory group and the county's criminal justice advisory council. For the leadoff, I'm Melissa Allen. Support for WGLT mental health coverage comes from Report for America and Chestnut Health Systems, caring for the community's physical and mental health and celebrating 50 years of service. Here are some of the other stories we are following in the WGLT newsroom. The McLean County Coroner's Office has identified the motorcyclist killed in a crash in Bloomington Tuesday morning. Authorities say 28-year-old Devin C. Williams of Normal was riding a motorcycle that collided with a pickup truck. And Planned Parenthood of Illinois reports it has seen a nearly 50% increase in abortions at its clinics in the two years since the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Many patients have come from states that have passed abortion restrictions. You can find more on these stories at WGLT.org. The incoming artistic director of the Illinois Shakespeare Festival in Normal says it's an honor and a responsibility to step into the role held by John Stark. Robert Quinlan says theater and outdoor Shakespeare are a magical part of the community and he can't think of a better way to spend his days than helping make that happen. In this interview with WGLT's Charlie Schlenker, Quinlan says the lovely setting at the Ewing Cultural Center and Stark's efforts to make the production special have set the festival apart from many similar offerings in the U.S. First of all, John Stark has done an incredible job as a steward for the theater, particularly during the really almost impossible period during COVID. And his just generosity of spirit, you know, he... he is Illinois Shakespeare Festival in some ways. He was involved in the uh, working with the architects on the building. Um, so, you know, he is irreplaceable. As I look ahead, I'm interested in the idea of access um, and accessibility in many different ways. So that the productions themselves, the Shakespeare will be accessible to anybody who comes, that somebody can walk in without ever having studied Shakespeare and understand the story, have a great experience, and want to come back. But also accessibility in terms of how well people can see and hear the productions, who is represented on our stages. I think kind of my first project is to think about 
access. The Shakespeare Festival can be a place where everybody in the community is welcome and wants to come. There's a two-edged sword on access, and mm -hmm. that is the majestic language of Shakespeare. Sure. Which can be hard to access. It's great language. It's not modern language. How do you translate that and yeah. make it more accessible? Yeah, I think as an audience member, it's helpful to just let the language wash over you and not feel responsible for understanding every single sentence that is spoken. The great thing about Shakespeare is that he was writing for an audience that included everybody. So the plays themselves were popular entertainment. They were meant to be enjoyed by everybody at all levels of society. Um, and I think that still rings true. I think if you come to the show and the actors are doing their job and understanding what they're saying, what their characters are going after in the scenes, then the human side of the story becomes clear. And once that becomes clear, once you get who they are and what they're doing, I think anybody can understand because the themes and the humanity in the plays does have a universality. Every production is, is a production of the play that we're doing, but it also is an examination of the moment that we live in. How do you nibble away at the edges of, of what might be more difficult? I really enjoy audience interaction, bringing actors out into the house to talk to people. We're so lucky to be able to do that again. To kind of immerse the audience in the story is one way. Live music. We do edit the plays. You know, I am not religious about the text in terms of making sure that um, every single word written by Shakespeare is spoken on stage. We will cut certain passages. We will change a couple of words here and there if it really helps the audience understand what's being said. Robert Quinlan takes over as artistic director of the Illinois Shakespeare Festival in the fall. This season starts in a few weeks with Twelfth Night, Macbeth, and Sense and Sensibility. Quinlan spoke with Charlie Schlenker. Hear more of this interview today on Sound Ideas at 5. Before we let you go, the state of Illinois is hosting a public meeting on the proposed closure of the Logan Correctional Center. It's today at 5 at Lincoln Junior High School. That's it for today. I'm Eric Stock. You can subscribe to the lead-off on the NPR app or wherever you get your podcasts.